Welcome back, everyone, to the Spooky Soup Podcast. I'm Jesse. And I'm Tessa. Last week was pretty good. I I want to go see a ghost town now. Yes. So bad. Uh, a couple nights ago, my wife and I were watching Ghost Adventures to get ready for my story for today. And, of course, I went off a tangent. And what I mean by that is I just kept watching the episodes. And I watched the... One of the latest uh, seasons where they went to the Saltaire, the great, great Saltaire, oh, yeah. Grand Saltaire yeah. in, here in Salt Lake City or Salt Lake. And I'm like, man, there's so many places here in Utah I got to go see. So I have to go see Grafton, the ghost town. You have to. If you guys didn't listen to that episode, check it out. It's just, it's a little taste of how truly chaotic utah was as a part of the wild wild west i mean like obviously we have ogden in 25th street but once you get down to southern utah that's where things get a little bit more like the movies Mm -hmm. so it's worth watch or worth listening to if you haven't yet Mm -hmm. a little taste of time yeah and it's fun in in our family this is just a personal side note in our family we have uh we're related to butch Cassidy and our mom and uncle and they have all these amazing stories about what he did here in Utah and how he was actually like, even though he was an outlaw, he was a a pretty cool guy. He's my favorite like historical person to learn about. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. And it just made it even better when we found out that we were related to him. Yeah. Um, but he was good friends with our great grandpa or great, great grandpa. One of the greats. Right. Yeah. Um, anyways, so Utah, has a very interesting history, a lot of cool Wild West history. Uh, so yeah, check out that episode. It's really good. Yeah, and we posted pictures on our Instagram. So if you want to see the cemetery that I talk about, you'll be able to see it. And the pictures are so cool because you get to see the landscape and how beautiful it is down there. And then mm-hmm. once you realize kind of the story of what's behind some of the tombstones, it definitely adds a creepy element. So that's where it gets dark. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay, well, I have the uh, historical story today. Woohoo, and I've got the Reddit story slash a news story today. Oh, awesome. Okay, well, uh, before you, uh, Tessa gets started, I just want to remind everyone that um, the pictures, if there are, well, there will be some that are associated with our story today, they will be posted on our Instagram and our TikTok, so you can view them there, so you can see what the heck we're talking about. Um, if you would like us to read one of your stories, uh, we do that. We can read it out uh, here on the podcast. You can email it to us at spooky soup podcast 801 at gmail.com or DM it to us on our Instagram. All right, let's dive in. So, okay. So before we like really get into it, I just want to know, have you watched jury duty yet? I have not watched it yet, but, uh, I know what it is. Yes. Yes. It's hilarious and it's free on Amazon if you guys don't know what it is, it's like a courtroom comedy where everyone's an actor for this court case, except for one person who thinks that they were actually called into jury duty, has no idea everyone everyone else is acting and basically doing improv the entire time. It's hilarious. And that was like a highlight of my week. So I just thought I should mention that. <laughs> right on. And Sorry. check it out. Yeah, check it out. And speaking of courtroom drama... The Lori Vallow slash Daybell trial is in full swing. Yeah. Uh, I like kind of forgot about her for a minute there. So I'm glad that you're bringing it back up. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's really, really intense and we don't know everything about it yet. Cause obviously it's still going on, but some new details came out within the past couple weeks and it's been really crazy. So I've got some highlights here. Well, it's just going to go over them for you guys. So if you don't know who Lori Vallow slash Daybell is, she is a mother who married a author named Chad Daybell and her two children, Tylee and JJ went missing for a very long time come to find out that they were killed and buried in Chad's backyard, particularly in his pet cemetery. So it gets pretty wild, especially because she was really into the cult doomsday stuff. So was he. So yeah, there's some new details about the case that have come out. And I think you might 
be pretty disgusted. So Tylee Ryan is or was 16 years old and JJ Vallow was seven years old. And in court recently, they played a phone call between Colby, who's her oldest son, and Lori. And in this phone call, he confronts her about murdering the children. And you can hear Lori laugh on the phone call while he's like sobbing and is so horrified that his mother murdered his siblings. Yeah. And she like laughs and then she says things like, you don't know what really happened. You can judge me all you want, but Tylee and JJ know what happened and they love me and the savior's on my side. And she just keeps repeating that. And of course, Colby is just distraught. He's on the stand. He's crying while he's hearing this. And Lori doesn't do anything. She's super cold in the courtroom this whole time. And on top of that, she actually fell asleep during the part when they were going over Tylee and JJ's remains and discussing their photographs of their corpses. Really? Yeah, she fell asleep in the courtroom when the detective who found their bodies was describing how he found them and the state of their remains when he found them describing in detail the colors and the things he saw and the smells and how he was on his hands and knees digging in the dirt. She fell asleep. And no, okay, I'm just going to straight up say it. No innocent mom, I don't care what happened, but if you're innocent, you're not falling asleep in court right. while your children's remains are being talked about. Yeah, there's no way. Like if you're innocent, you're not going to fall asleep and you're not going to ask to be excused from court like Lori did um, while they're showing these pictures of your dead children's corpses um, because you'd be paying attention and sobbing and throwing up, shaking, whatever, because you're desperate to find out what happened and who did it. But, you know, to me, that just screams that she's guilty. I mean, we all knew it, but that's just another reason to think that she's guilty. On top of that, people believe that she was given a drug which made her fell asleep during that time because, as I mentioned earlier in the day, she asked to be excused from court and the judge said no. And then she went to the bailiff's room and then she went back to court and she fell asleep. So mm. people are speculating maybe she was slipped to Xanax to help her sit quietly through this part of the trial because it would be really hard. But I'm like, she killed her kids. Yeah. She should face what she did. I don't care if you have anxiety or you don't have anxiety. You would definitely <laughs> be awake while they're uh, describing how your kids were murdered if you were guilty, of course. Yeah. Or, and or not guilty, excuse me. Exactly. And, you know, there's a chance her brother, Alex, who's now deceased, was the one who actually killed them. And I don't know if they're going to, like, talk about who actually did it. I don't know if they found out who actually did it. Even so, she was the puppet master behind all of this. Mm -hmm. It's definitely her fault. So Alex is the, like the, he's the older brother? Sorry. So Alex is Lori Vallow's brother. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, to tie this together for you. So Lori used to be married to a guy named Charles Vallow. He is JJ Vallow's adopted father. And... Charles was shot by Alex. He was murdered by Alex and they claimed it was self-defense. However, there's absolutely no evidence to support that. Hmm. Sus. And then Tammy Daybell. So Chad Daybell, the author that Lori is now married to. Yes. Right. She was murdered two weeks after Lori bought an engagement ring with Chad Daybell. So Chad's wife, Tammy, was, it was believed to have been natural causes. However, her body was recently exhumed and it came out in court that she died from asphyxiation of foul play. Not surprised. And guess what? The day after her body was being exhumed and it was on the news, Alex died of natural causes. Mm -hmm. cool. And Alex, it's believed that he was the one who was Lori's hitman because... Lori's, I think, like her nephew, he, there was an attempted murder on him. Someone drove by and Charles, so the guy that Alex claimed to kill in self-defense, he had a black Jeep 
after he died, someone was seen in his Jeep and shot at the nephew. And hmm. it didn't kill him. It didn't hit him. It shot out the windows of his car, luckily. But the Jeep, like, sped off because they, you know, they didn't do it. So, yeah, Alex, I, I wonder if they're going to dive into that because it's very suspicious that he was found dead the day after Tammy's remains were exhumed. And then jurors were shown pictures of JJ and Tylee's remains. And it was revealed that JJ was wrapped in duct tape all around his head. And people are saying, you don't do that to a corpse. So he was likely alive when this happened. Hmm. And his body was wrapped in a black plastic bag and was buried below pieces of wood board and then buried below the surface with some dirt. His hair was sticking out, and that's what indicated to the detectives that remains were just a little bit underneath the board. That's the first thing they saw was his hair. And he was found to be wearing red pajamas, and the detective says that he immediately recognized who it was. And then Tylee was found, and I'm saying this as respectfully as I can, but she was found in pieces. She had been dismembered, burned, and what was left of her was shoved in a plastic bucket that was half melted and buried. Wow. And the only way that they identified her was from a jawbone. So the a dentist yeah. or orthodontist was able to identify her. Wow. And she was found buried in the pet cemetery. And the detective who discovered the remains describes it as pieces of flesh and charred bones scattered. And that's why he was on his hands and knees is because he's not like digging with the shovels because there's literal just like chunks of fat and pieces in the ground that he's looking for. Like picking him up. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. So there's a little update for you. Pretty dark. Um, I'll be covering this next time we record as well just because it's so insane. And everyone should know about this. I don't know. Yeah, why yeah. it's not getting national news right now is ridiculous. I mean, I feel like it is. I saw it. To be honest, it hasn't come across a single thing of, on my feed, at least. Oh, okay. So I guess that's that's what I mean. Well, I mean, okay, to be fair, Instagram knows me really well. So <laughs> I get this stuff on my feed often. But anyways, let's hop into these Reddit stories, give you some little ear bleach. <laughs> <laughs> Do, is, it, is this going to be like a palate cleanser from that? Or is it going to be like, like a... I don't even know how to call it dark palate cleanser because now I'm just sad. <laughs> It'll be a dark palate cleanser. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. But I don't think you'll be as sad. Awesome. Okay. Now this first one comes to you guys from the r slash scary stories Reddit posted by Coffee Beans. And it's called personality test that will show you the real you. It was probably 630 on a Tuesday. I unlaced my black Converse sneakers and put them down in the corner of my room before throwing myself into the center of my bed. I looked over to the desk besides me and took the laptop that typically sits there and opened it. I decided it would be the best choice to scroll on the internet while I thought about what I wanted to do that night. I scrolled and scrolled. I ate some of the spoiled chips I left in my room months before the night. Soon, however, my friend sent me an email. I groaned as I clicked on the email and read it to myself slowly, still munching on the not so good chips I had eaten before this. Hey pal, it's your buddy from work, Rob. I just took this super cool personality test a few hours ago and thought you might like it. Send me what you get. See you tomorrow at work. I rolled my eyes as I read the email. At the same time, I thought, hey, I had just been looking for something to do, right? What I had been looking for had just placed itself neatly in my lap. A lame time killer. I sighed and put the chips aside, and I clicked on the glowing blue link Rob had sent me. It looked to be some lame quiz website with letters on the screen that read, This personality test knows you better than you. Take the 15 question quiz now. How cheesy. I clicked continue. The test was as dumb as I thought it was. The first question was as simple as it gets. Out of these colors, what do you like best? There was red, green, purple, blue, and pink. I chose blue and clicked the next question. Out of these numbers, which do you like best? I clicked four, then continued. Out of these statements, which of them is true to you? 
I like to be around my friends. I mostly spend time alone. I like to live with friends and family. I live by myself. I questioned the second set of choices. I clicked on the first choice and moved on. I would know if I was being watched. I chuckled when I saw the words show up on my screen. If Rob didn't know anything about me, he knew I loved creepy gag tests. I clicked yes and continued. I enjoy to meet new people. Not really. I prefer to be alone or with close friends. I picked no and moved on. I always make sure I lock doors and windows. Doors? Sure. Windows? Not so much. I still picked yes and moved to the next question. I am alone right now. Of course I am, unless a cat counts. I picked yes. How far is your nearest hospital? I had moved to this house not that long ago. Maybe it had been a year by now. Regardless, I had no idea. It wasn't within 15 minutes of me, so I picked 20 miles. Somebody would know if I went missing. Most likely, I picked yes. <laughs> I am a likable person. Well, I'd like to think so, so I picked yes. My neighbors would look for me if I went missing. My only neighbor was some crazy old cat lady. She hates me. Well, honestly, she hates everyone, so I picked no. I am aware of my surroundings. I mean, I am blasting music so loud I can't even hear myself think. I picked no. You should close your window. I looked up to the open window next to my bed. How did the snow about my window? I walked over and stuck my head out the window. The city still marched on below me, and the hot spring breeze kept blowing. No creeps spying on me. I closed the window and locked it. A new prompt was already on my screen when I returned. I am prepared to fight for my life if I had to. I paused for a second. I took a moment to text my mom and locked the door to my room. I then clicked yes. Did you have fun? Nope. This test was a bit creepy, even for me, but I still clicked yes. Thank you for submitting your test. Please wait. I watched the website load for a while. Great. I broke the stupid thing. I looked down at my phone and texted my coworker about his broken test when I heard a small ping from my laptop. Test results are in. Click here to view them now. I expected to see some kind of lame write-up, but what I saw chilled me to my bones. It was a picture of me answering question seven from my bedroom window. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, how did they get there? How did they know where he was? <laughs> yeah. It's just, it resonated with me because growing up, I took those stupid BuzzFeed quizzes in like junior high, you mm -hmm. know, which I saw that they're actually being shut down. But anyways. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Weird story. I really enjoyed it though. For some reason, I was thinking of Megan. I think just like an AI, kind of a bot vibe just going through my head. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Okay, what else do you have for us today? All right, I have another story for you. It's coming from a new subreddit for us on the Spooky Soup podcast. It's actually from r slash stay awake. And I had a lot of fun exploring this one. So this is from Tormentalist, and it's called Blue is for Boys. I didn't know I was poor until December 2005. I was eight years old, and as an only daughter, I was showered with enough love and attention that I barely noticed the absence of possessions. That Christmas Eve, though, I learned a few things. That year, they held a Toys for Tots-style event at the local video store. Customers were encouraged to drop a toy into the cardboard box to earn points towards a free rental. I'd seen the box before and even asked my mom if we should donate something for a poor kid. That's how, ob that's how oblivious I was. That day, my parents brought me to the store to return Prisoner of Azkaban. When I saw Santa seated on a throne in the middle of the room, I immediately knew I was really there to see him. I was ecstatic as we waited, and I could barely keep from breaking into nervous tears as I got to his lap. The man looked weathered and weary, with a noticeable wart on the corner of his eye. He wasn't what I'd been expecting, but I'd visited grandparents before, so I wasn't put off by his rough, reddish-yellow complexion. What really caught my notice was the smell. It wasn't overwhelming, but he smelled like my friend's baby brother, like a musty diaper. I shifted uncomfortably as I felt the crackle of plastic in his lap. Ho, 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 he exclaimed, dispelling my misgivings. What would you like for Christmas? I told him everything I wanted, though I hadn't had any prep time. 
I asked for a job for my dad, which must have seemed thoughtless. After my parents took pictures, I was off Santa's lap and onto solid ground. Go over and pick out a present, Santa boomed, giving me a guiding hand to a small folding card table. That's when it hit me. A cold feeling hit the pit of my stomach. He wanted me to pick out a toy for a poor kid. I looked to my parents, sure they gesture for me to leave the table and come back to them. Instead, they nodded and smiled, completely unaware of the mental crisis I'd stumbled into. I reached for a box in blue paper. No, Santa boomed again, a sudden harsher tone wrapping his voice in thorns. I softened again as he continued. Blue is for good little boys. Pink is for sweet little girls. I obediently selected a pink box before scurrying back to my mom in a miniature panic. I couldn't open the present on Christmas morning. I thought it'd be a broken, dirty doll someone dropped into the donation box and s instead of throwing it away. I'd never been selfish like that, but being surprised with the idea that I needed charity played havoc with my young, fragile outlook on life. Dad ended up opening it up for me, assuming I was too humble to accept it. I didn't correct him as he pulled out a new, pristine-looking white teddy bear. I instantly fell in love, naming him Snowy Bear. I learned a lot that year, and I don't mean that we weren't rich. I learned what it meant to appreciate the kindness of others, and that our finances didn't make us lesser as people. Many years later, while unpacking in my new apartment, I pulled the shedding, bedraggled Snowy out of a forgotten box. Feeling nostalgic, I hugged the bear tightly, so tightly, in fact, that a wireless camera fell out of its eye socket. <laughs> you guys couldn't see it, but I just like I just like went wide eyed. I was like, <laughs> I was like sitting back in my chair, just like, oh, fun, cute like, little Christmas story. The bear's gonna come alive and kill their whole family. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for the twist. There's the twist. <laughs> There's the twist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, creepy um, Santa. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine if no. you're put in that situation and then you're like, well, crap, what do I do? I don't know. That guy's probably dead at that point. He better be. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Ugh. Alrighty. Well, that's my last Reddit story for you. I hope you guys enjoyed some of our, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it news coverage, but news updates. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, I appreciate it because it, you're, you're better at, Tell, you're, you're really good at telling the news compared to a lot of these other news outlets. You do your research. Thank you. I try. <laughs> you succeed. All right. And you've got the story for us. I'm excited. Okay. Well, everyone in the world has most likely heard of one of the most infamous prisons in the world, Alcatraz. Yes! <laughs> the stories, prisoners, escapees, and paranormal activity all come together to give us a place to really talk about. However, in today's story, I wanted to share some other stories from a different prison called Philadelphia's Eastern State Penitentiary. Yes! <laughs> I love this one. This prison is known for housing some of the worst criminals America's history has seen. Wait, is this where Slipknot held their concert like two years ago? Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, they had a concert at a penitentiary. It, I, it was like a metal fest, but particularly Slipknot was there, and you could like pre-register to buy a jumpsuit <laughs> to like go to the concert. I wanted to go so bad. <laughs> okay, right on. Anyways. If you've heard of this prison, and you're a spooky person like ourselves, you probably saw the Ghost Adventures episode where they visited it in 2009. That was the first time I, per I had personally heard of it. And it's a wild episode. I recommend everyone check it out. It's season two, episode six. And I actually went back and rewatched it so I can get a better understanding for today's story. Man, you do your research. I am so stoked about this one. Thank you. This is a place of nightmares. It's That's pretty much the only way I can describe it. The prison has been closed since the 1970s. So the whole place is in complete ruin. When you see pictures of it, you'll understand why it's not only one of the most haunted places in the States, but one of the most haunted places in the entire world. This penitentiary housed over 75,000 inmates, and these people were the scum of the earth. I'm guessing every now and then you had, you know, some guy stole, stole a candy bar and then 
sent to prison, but no, straight this, to jail, <laughs> right to jail. But this place, it, it was, it was for the, the worst, of the worst. Um, it was built to isolate prisoners and force them to find God. Um, and the, the whole idea of this prison literally came about in Benjamin Franklin's home. Um, it was like they were trying to force these people to uh, to put their evil ways behind them and look for God, find God. Oh, because that is tried and true and always works. Well, they went about it the, wrong, the worst way possible, of course. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to give you a, like a better perspective, they would cover the iron door, cell doors with wooden doors so they couldn't talk to each other. So you have your, you have your iron door and then another one so that keeps the sound out. Ooh, isolation. Yeah. Inmates were forced to wear masks when moving to a new cell so they wouldn't talk to each other so they couldn't like see, you know, the other inmates. Um, essentially, every cell was meant to be solitary confinement. Wow. That's really horrible. <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, people lived uh, like life sentences here. And so just that was the rest of their life. So many inmates died there from old age, from being there for forever, and then they got cancer. Or um, even in like the turn of the century, TB was going around, so they got TB, they died there. So like just living the rest of their lives there, miserable. I'm sure like conditions like that would cut your life short too. Yes. Like there's got to be some aspect of the social part and not living in harmony. Right, right. And the conditions, of course, weren't very good. So, so um, although he didn't die at the prison, Al Capone, the infamous Chicago gangster, was incarcerated at the penitentiary in 1929 for carrying a concealed weapon, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Wow. Yeah. Um, but during his stay at the prison, he was housed in a relatively comfortable cell that was furnished with a desk, a lamp, a rug, and even a radio. And back then these weren't small items like the the radio itself is pretty big um the only way i can describe it is if you've seen a christmas story and you know he's sitting there listening to the radio um to hear his uh uh what what, what's the drink again ovaltine ovaltine he's sitting there trying to get his uh with, with his decoder pen and everything anyways that that imagine that radio pretty much um so despite this, his lavish accommodations, Capone was reportedly haunted by his past. Jimmy Clark, to be exact, one of the victims of the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Capone spent much of his time at that prison pacing the cell and worrying about his future while being haunted by old Jimmy Clark. After Capone was released from Eastern State Penitentiary, there had been numerous reports of his ghost being seen in and around the prison. Visitors have claimed to smell cigar smoke and hear strange noises coming from Capone's former cell. Some have also reported seeing a ghostly figure resembling Capone walking the corridors of the prison, often accompanied by the sound of rattling chains. The prison staff and visitors have also re reported strange occurrences in Capone's former cell. The radio in the cell is said to turn on and off by itself, and some have claimed to feel a cold breeze when standing near it. Others have reported feeling a strong sense of unease or even being pushed by an invisible force. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, the legend of Al Capone's ghost at Eastern State Penitentiary has become a popular part of the prison's folklore. Which is funny to me because he didn't die there. Right, and he also spent time at Alcatraz. Yeah. So he's just hanging out in both prisons. <laughs> He's Mr. Worldwide. <laughs> the haunted Selbach 12 is said to be the most haunted part of the prison, with reports of apparitions, cold spots, and strange sounds. Some visitors have claimed to see ghostly figures in the cells and have reported feeling a sense of dread and unease when entering the block. It was originally built in the 1830s and housed some of the prisoners' most violent and dangerous inmates, including notorious criminals like the man I just mentioned, Al Capone, and also Willie Sutton. Side note, Sutton and his buddies dug a tunnel that got them all the way to the sidewalk from their cells. No way! That's so cool! It, they dug all the way out, um, 
But as soon as they came out, they were very quickly caught because they dug right into mud. And so they just, people were like looking around and they just see these guys covered in mud <laughs> and like, oh, those are inmates. So they were quickly caught and sent back to the, right yeah. back inside. So they tried. They tried. Uh, the cell block itself consists of two tiers of cells arranged in a wagon wheel shape with a central guard tower overlooking the cells. The cells were small, cramped, and windowless, and inmates were subjected to strict isolation and discipline. The combination of the oppressive environment, strict discipline, and violent inmates led to numerous incidents of violence and unrest in the cell blocks. Today, visitors to Eastern State Penitentiary often report strange and eerie experiences in cell block 12. Some report feeling a strong sense of unease or being watched by unseen forces, while others report hearing unexplained noises or seeing ghostly apparitions. Cold spots have also been reported in the cell block, even on warm days, and visitors have claimed to feel sudden drops in temperature when walking through the cell block. It's a pretty common thing. I feel like you, you walk this prison, you're going to feel cold spots. You're going to hear something. If you watch the Ghost Adventures episode, they caught some stuff on, on, on camera there's it's just you you're gonna hear something you're gonna feel something it's teeming with activity yes one of the most commonly reported paranormal phenomena at the penitentiary is the appearance of a shadowy figure this figure is said to move quickly through the prison walls and corridors disappearing and reappearing in different locations without warning witnesses describe the figure as being dark and with no discernible features or form Many visitors to the prison have reported seeing the shadowy figure, often feeling a sudden chill or sense of unease when it appears. Some have also reported hearing strange noises, such as footsteps or rustling clothing when the figure is nearby. Despite the many reports of the shadowy figure, there have been no definitive explanations for its appearance. Some speculate that it could be the spirit of, of a former inmate, while others believe that it could be a residual energy imprint left behind by the prison's violent and tumultuous tumultuous excuse me past the cackling ghost in cell block six is one of the most famous and unsettling paranormal phenomena reported at the penitentiary the ghost is said to be the spirit of an inmate who died in cell block six and is known for its distinctive and eerie cackling laugh according to legend the inmate was a notorious troublemaker who was frequently punished for his unruly behavior he was often locked up in solitary confinement in cell block 6, where he would spend hours in complete isolation. Over time, the inmate's mental state deteriorated, and he became increasingly erratic and unstable. Eventually, the inmate died in his cell under mysterious circumstances, and his, and his ghost is said to haunt the cell block to this very day. Visitors to the penitentiary have reported hearing the ghostly cackling laughter echoing through the halls of cell block 6, often accompanied by some strange and unexplained noises. Some visitors have even, re even reported a sense of malevolent energy in the vicinity of the cell, and many claim to have been touched or pushed by an unseen force while exploring the area. One of the most commonly reported ghosts at the penitentiary is that of a ghostly guard. This ghost is said to appear as a full-bodied apparition dressed in a guard's uniform, often seen patrolling the corridors and cell blocks of the prison. According to legend, the ghostly guard is the spirit of a former prison guard who died under mysterious circumstances while on duty. Some believe that the guard was killed by inmates during a riot, while others speculate that he may have taken his own life after years of witnessing the violence and suffering that occurred within the prison walls. Visitors to the penitentiary have reported seeing the ghostly guard in various parts of the prison, often accompanied by the sound of jangling keys or the sound of footsteps echoing through the halls. Some have even reported feeling a sudden drop in temperature when the ghostly guard is nearby, and others claim to have felt a sense of unease or fear in its presence. Despite the many reports of the ghostly guard, there have been no definitive uh, proof of its existence and the identity of the guard remains a mystery. But unfortunately, murders happened all the time at the prison. In the 1830s, one guard was murdered by an inmate, and the inmate's name was Joseph Taylor. Taylor was convinced the guards were trying to poison him, so to make sure the guards wouldn't get away with it, he took apart a sewing machine and bashed one of the guards' head, head in in the exercise yard. 
he went back to his cell after beating him to death and simply took a nap. That area where the beating happened has very negative energy and people report um, feelings of sadness, um, feeling of being like overwhelmed um, in that very spot where he died. The prison employed a number of very barbaric torture methods, including the water bath, in which inmates were submerged before being exposed to freezing winter air until the ice formed on their skin. They would also, uh, there's the prison walls are huge, and they would also chain them to the wall in the winter and just constantly uh, keep pouring water on them. Maybe even like from a hose, just keep sprouting water until their their skin formed ice, pretty much. Jeez. There was also the mad chair, which tightly bound inmates, cutting off their circulation and leading uh, to the need for amputation. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's horrible. They would keep them there for uh, for days if they need to. And a lot of times it was to get information out of them or of course punish them for bad behavior. So the iron gag was another torture device that involved binding an inmate's hand behind their back and strapping an iron collar into their mouth, causing the tongue to, to tear and bleed with any movement. And finally, the hole. The hole was a dark and damp underground cell where prisoners were deprived of light, human contact, exercise, toilets, and sufficient food and air. Wow. I assume a lot of people died in there. Of course. Of course. If they didn't die, they probably most likely went insane. Yeah. These are just a few of the many chilling stories associated with Eastern State Penitentiary. Whether or not you believe in ghosts, a visit to the eerie and historic site is sure to leave you feeling spooked, I would say. Ooh, dang. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah, I remember that episode. It's wild. It's yeah. crazy. Um, that was yeah, and that's one of the first places they visited for the show. So it's season two. So um, Discovery Plus, check it out, dude. Yeah, I will. That was so crazy. Yeah. Little side story I learned about Al Capone. Mm -hmm. um, I was listening to an old like Paul Harvey broadcast, and he was telling a story about this guy in I think it was Chicago who opened up like this soup kitchen and it was this mystery dude no one knew who it was and everyone was like falling like head over heels for whoever this mystery generous man was turns out it was al capone and he was feeding i think it was three thousand people a week for free he was wow. straight up feeding people through the great depression yeah wow and then here he is doing saint valentine's day massacre stuff uh-huh I'm Serv so torn on him. Like, serving. I love his history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and he has, um, like, his stay at Alcatraz is crazy as well. Like, yeah. Yeah, so that's a whole other beast that we can get into another day. But, but oh. yeah, there you go. That is Eastern State Penitentiary. It's crazy learning about all the brutality of America's past, you know? I'm not surprised, but I'm also surprised. <laughs> That's awful. Jeez. If you, sorry, I keep referring back to the Ghost Adventures episode just because they actually, obviously they go to the prison. They sit in, um, they sit in the mad chair. It's still there. What? And uh, Aaron like binds, uh, like ties Zach up to the chair, you know, to like <laughs> oh, get, wow. not really get yeah. the experience, but to like, to get a, a uh, rile up the spirits around him i'd say kind of put himself in that mindset mm -hmm. but it's very weird watching that happen because you're like man they really actually did that yeah so that makes me wonder if people were like sedated and woken up in that chair because i imagine it would be hard to put someone in it who's fighting mm -hmm. Ooh, the horrors yep yep okay well that's my story for today do you have anything else for us that's everything for me. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Take a bow. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, you as well. Thanks. Okay. We will scare you in the next one, guys. Stay spooky. Bye.